Throughout the 2022 midterm cycle, Vice News has been covering the candidates who've been working to undermine our democracy. And all roads have led us here to Pennsylvania to report on the race for governor. The Democratic nominee is Josh Shapiro. He's a well-documented player in Pennsylvania because, well, he's the attorney general. His rival is Doug Mastriano. He made a name for himself on the right during the pandemic by protesting mask mandates, pushing to have mandatory Bible study in school, and insisting the 2020 election was stolen. He even showed up at January 6th and is being subpoenaed for his involvement in the insurrection. Now he's the Republican nominee in one of the most pivotal elections in this country. His campaign has been notoriously secretive, but we've been trying to see who is paying attention and how he got this far. Events like this usually aren't a big part of Doug Mastriano's campaign, but neither are TV ads, talking to press, or building relationships with other Republicans. He first built a following online with constant election denialism after Trump's loss in 2020. I pray for the leaders also in, in the federal government, God, on the 6th of January, that they will rise up with boldness. You'll bless these letters that President Trump asked me this morning to send to Mitch McConnell and Kevin McCarthy, outlining the fraud in Pennsylvania. Mastriano is pretty aligned with all the other Trump loyalists across the country running for office this year. He even spent campaign funds to charter buses to the January 6th insurrection. The difference is that Mastriano is running for the governor of Pennsylvania, one of the most powerful seats in the country, because whoever holds it can rewrite the state's voting laws and appoint a secretary of state who can deny election outcomes. And despite Mastriano's elusive campaign strategies, he seems to have built a devoted fan base. Why do you think Doug Mastriano would make a good governor for Pennsylvanians specifically? Because he was right from the get-go. The COVID, the shots, the vaccines, the shutdown, the way they destroyed our economy. Doug would have never done none of that. And I like that he is a, just an honest Christian guy. I, I really believe that I can uh, trust him to do the right thing by Pennsylvanians. He's honest, he's trustworthy, and I believe that he has a lot of values that align with my values. Mastriano takes the old political cliche of fighting for the soul of the nation pretty literally. He depicts Democrats who support abortion, climate change intervention, or LGBTQ rights as satanic. Even his campaign slogan is just a quote from the Bible. So the slogan is, walk as free people. Correct. Why do you resonate with that? Uh, because that is what our liberties, especially being from Pennsylvania, is founded on. You know, this is the Keystone State. You know, we were founded on things like religious freedom with William Penn, and that resonates with me. And so far, only Doug Mastriano has, you know, fought for that. There's a name for this type of thinking, Christian nationalism, the belief that America is a Christian nation, and the government should take any step to keep it that way. Even though it's become much more popular in the last few years, this ideology has a long history. So when it comes to Christian nationalism, how would you describe that? Some of the, what we've seen among Christian nationalists who are running for political office is they describe politics as spiritual warfare. Uh, they might describe their political campaign as a kind of military battle. Um, so there's this kind of connection between violence and, and Christianity. Doug Mastriano, for example, went to this Jericho march. Jericho was one of the cities that was part of the Canaanite conquest in the Hebrew Bible. This is literally language about killing people. And we don't know when those metaphors will incite actual violence. In recent months, there have been several reports of Mastriano's ties with Gab, the anti-Semitic and conspiracy-ridden social network. That's the site where the shooter at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh laid out his plans. And Gab's CEO regularly pushes conspiracies like the Great Replacement Theory. If he were to win, you know, what's at stake, what's at risk when those kinds of beliefs um, bleed into policy and how he can really change people's lives? Mm -hmm. So there's this language of freedom, but at the same time, he wants to limit women's rights. He wants to limit gay and trans rights. He wants to limit how people can vote, right? So he wants to limit voters' rights. Um, and he has wanted to pass even some le legislation where the Bible is taught in schools, um, which is a kind of form of Christian privilege, which would limit other people's religious rights. Mastriano has rejected the label of Christian nationalists. But other Trump acolytes with similar views have embraced it. 
There are anti-Trump Republicans who have had enough of GOP nominees mimicking the former president. And they're actively working to make sure candidates like Mastriano lose. So we're about to meet with a guy named Craig Snyder, who is a longtime member of the GOP here in Pennsylvania, but has been actively working to get Republican voters to vote against Doug Mastriano in the midterms. We have specifically uh, targeted uh, about 250,000 registered voters, likely voters, people who regularly vote in elections, um, who are either Republicans or Republican-leaning independent voters, um, who we believe want to preserve democracy. They don't want uh, what Mastriano represents, and we think they're going to cross over and, and split tickets. If we can get uh, a, a reasonable number, and I, and I believe we will, uh, of Republicans to, tick, to split their tickets in this race, uh, I think we can determine the outcome and make sure uh, that uh, Mastriano is defeated and that Josh Shapiro is the next governor of the state. Did you ever think in 2022 that you would be actively campaigning for a Democratic governor? Uh, no. I mean, the short answer is no. I thought the Republican Party could be uh, uh, salvaged, could be improved. But when you get to this point where the nominee is somebody as extreme uh, as Mastriano is, uh, not only on election integrity issues, but really across the board, um, I, I think you got to take a stand. Uh, I say to people all the time, if you get invited to a banquet and they tell you you're going to pick chicken or fish, uh, and you might want pasta, but it's not, they're not serving it. So you got to pick one or the other. And in this case, um, you know, uh, Mastriano is the fish that's, that's rotten and stinks. And you got to pick the chicken. And that's, that's Josh Shapiro. <laughs> They don't want to talk about how they want to deem any parent who has a strong opinion about their child's education as domestic terrorists. Yep. Yep. Strange times we live in. They don't want to talk about the shutdown. They want you to forget about the COVID mandates, the forced masking of your kids. They don't want to talk about how they did everything they could to blunt our questions into voting integrity. I think that the Republican Party still doesn't realize how radicalized their base has become under Donald Trump. Sarah Longwell's job involves regularly polling voters in Pennsylvania. It's possible that what Doug Mastriano is doing is he doesn't really think he can win a general election, but he thinks he can become kind of a local uh, celebrity, somebody that the base, you know, uh, looks to for leadership. And that's a lot of this Republican Party now. There's people who can own sections of the base by being more and more extreme. Um, and then they can still have uh, political power in a state. It's possible Mastriano's views are too extreme even for Trump lovers. He's not polling well and hasn't raised much money. But anybody who witnessed Trump's surprise win in Pennsylvania in 2016 knows better than to count Mastriano out. We talked about his lack of kind of public ad campaigns, but how he does attract the base on social media through Facebook. Um, does that give you any fear? Are you nervous that this kind of silent base that he's building is going to end up popping up um, in November? Hey, look, one of the things that Donald Trump showed us is that the polls are missing a lot of voters. And so it's very hard to predict turnout for a candidate like this. I'm from Pennsylvania. I think I know that there are voters that exist uh, who would find Doug Mastriano attractive. I would like to think that that is not a majority of voters in Pennsylvania. But there's always this question of, you know, have these people participated in elections before? Do Are they showing up in polling and just not being sure and, and wondering if there is this red wave uh, in 2022 that there's going to be all these people that you didn't expect to see turning out and voting for Doug Mastriano. I'm Michael Learmonth, Editor-in-Chief of Vice News. Too often, traditional news outlets shy away from the real stories and experiences of those living through global conflicts, not Vice News. Our reporters are on the ground, fearlessly covering the human stories that shape our world. You and millions of others can continue to read, watch, and listen to Vice News for free. But we hope you'll consider making a one-time or ongoing contribution of any size at vice.com slash contribute. Every contribution, no matter how big or small, helps support the journalism Vice News brings to you every day. Thank you.